I'm Dr. Tom Griffiths, and after 40 years of continuous service as a water safety expert at three major universities, I've partnered up with the pool management group and its partner companies to provide you lifeguards with a vitally important message. During the past 40 years, I've published seven textbooks, four water safety videos, some of which you've seen, like Disappearing Dummies and the Five Minute Scanning Strategy, and 300 articles. But what I'm here to tell you is that drownings do happen in lifeguarded pools. Even under the best of circumstances with the most conscientious lifeguards on duty, drownings do happen. If you guard long enough, it's like terrorism. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And when a drowning does occur in a guarded pool, oftentimes the three Ds come into play. And you may ask, what are the three Ds? The three Ds stand for dereliction, dereliction of duty, that is, um, denial, and delay. And I don't think any pool management group lifeguards are going to be derelict in their duties. I think they're going to be focusing on the patrons. But even for those that are, when you see a child in distress, oftentimes they look like they're playing instead. And this denial leads to a delay which can lead to the loss of life in as little as 90 seconds. It's not the lack of lifeguarding supervision that causes drowning deaths in guarded pools, but it's the lapses in, in the guarding uh, supervision provided by lifeguard. Let me tell you a story, a true life scenario that happened just a few years ago, um, and as a result, there was a loss of life. In a very popular, well-guarded, well-trained, uh, water park, indoor water park, uh, a four-year-old boy was attending a birthday party. He ventured out into water with his brothers and his cousins to play. A lifeguard on duty who was standing and watching the boy on the surface of the water face down thought that he was playing and holding his breath as many other children were doing. The head lifeguard came over and was speaking to the lifeguard briefly to check on his schedule and say, hey, how's that boy doing? How long has that boy been there? And the lifeguard said, well, he's been there for a while. He can hold his breath a long time. And so the two of them spent more time discussing it. And so finally, the head lifeguard said, I think we ought to check on him. And so rather than jumping in, they had another child tap on the child's shoulder. And of course, the child was dead. Keep in mind that the father was at poolside watching this whole scenario, and he didn't know that the child was in trouble. Most of the textbooks display a drowning victim as a vertical posture in the water. And that may be true for adults. But for small children, usually the drowning posture is a horizontal one, one with the head face down in the water. So they do look like they're swimming or practicing or playing. So for lifeguards on duty, the important message is, first of all, don't be derelict in your duty be on your chair, be on your station, be patrolling, keep your eyes focused on the water, no distractions, no, dis no socialization, no testing of chemicals while you're on duty. But in addition to that, when you see anything that seems to be different in the water, when you see a small child that appears to be holding their breath or playing underwater, 10 seconds max is, is all you should take to check that person out. And after 10 seconds, when in doubt, check them out. When you don't know, go. Uh, get in the water, tap on their shoulder, see if they're OK. Um, there will be denial, because you don't anticipate this happen. Most lifeguards after the incident, and we've investigated hundreds of drowning incidents with lifeguards on duty, they most often say, I thought the child was playing. I thought the child was holding their breath, when in reality, they were suffocating. So. Please, the take home message here is you don't have many defenses or many technologies to help you. So when you're on duty, please don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to leave your chair to enter the water and simply ask, are you OK? Don't ever hesitate and wonder why someone's on the bottom of the pool or how long have they been there. Just react. And the other thing is you want to keep kids and, and all people up on the surface of the water. Underwater swimming is reserved for, 
for people who are getting training and being coached. We really want to reduce underwater swimming, breath holding games, and so forth. They should be banned, prolonged breath holding. And one of the reasons why is it's so popular and so common that lifeguards often ignore victims in distress because it looks like a normal, acceptable activity. So once again, uh, when you're guarding the pool, have a safe and enjoyable summer, enjoy your job, stay alert. But the key message here is avoid the three Ds. Don't be derelict in your duty. Don't deny that a child or an adult may be in trouble and don't delay. It's better off to have a false alarm than a dead person on your watch. I thank you and I thank the pool management group for allowing me to do the safety message for lifeguards. Thank you very much.